Welcome to Kazan, the sports capital of Russia. A spectacular city with a rich history, Kazan has played host to numerous international sporting events and now welcomes the IJF World Judo Tour for the first time. The 10,000-seater Tatneft Arena would host the last event on the World Judo Tour before June's World Judo Championships. And during an eye-catching opening ceremony, International Judo Federation President the Mr. Marius Vizza opened the event. In this program, we'll follow the efforts of the ever-improving Russian team on home soil. We get to know Japan's iconic head coach, Kozei Inui. <laughs> we head to our dojo to get some in-depth technical analysis from Neil Adams. And we'll unveil our brand new quiz feature, Think Fast, all before we see one of Judo's biggest stars in action, Japan's Abe Uta. But we start with the men's under 100 kilogram division, where the home nation had high hopes of gold from the ever impressive Armin Adamian. The Russian has explosive power and is one of the best counter attackers in the business, as he showed in his semi final win over former world champion Cho of Korea. Standing in his way would be surprise package Katarina of the Netherlands. His best moment of the day came against Sijinic of Hungary. Adamian versus Katarina in a gold medal showdown. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Just over a minute in, both fighters really opening up. Something is definitely going to happen here. Both going for the same technique. And it's Kosoto going to happen. Adamian scores on Katarina. And there were two points of contact there. One shoulder, then the other. So only a Wazari. But that was great stuff. Change of direction from Adamian. And now Katarina has it all to do. The Russian crowd absolutely loving this. Adamian on home soil. Can he win the gold? Oh, no, he can't. And Katarina has scored an hip on with the same technique. He went one way, first of all, went for the right coast then he changed it to the left. And Adamian really took the bait. Have a look how he goes for the right. Then he changes it to the left. And Adamian goes absolutely flat onto his back there. Same technique, only this time it was Katarina that scores the hip on. His first ever Grand Slam medal of any kind, and it's gold. Brilliant stuff from Katarina. The under 90 kilogram division saw Japan's only male entry in Kazan, Murao Sanshiro, who traveled with Japanese head coach Inui Koze. And not wanting to waste his chance, he put on a show, dispatching everyone in his path, including home favorite Igolnikov, on his way to the gold medal match. Waiting for him there was Germany's Edouard Trippel, who overcame veteran clergé of France and former world champion Maidov of Serbia to set up a mouth-watering encounter. A moment before stepping out for the final, the two wished each other luck in a show of respect so typical in judo. And then it was down to business. Both fighters been on great form all day. Ippon's all the way. Triple, so unorthodox though, he really is. Now then, Soto Makikomi! Oh, wow, from this angle, it looked like it could be a score. And the referee wants to see it again, and it'll go to the video referee. And his back goes nowhere near the floor. He does a full somersault. So absolutely no score there. And uh, Triple, well, sh should I say Moreau, lives to fight again. Full somersault out of that. Now, oh, look at that! Oh, brilliant stuff there from Moreau. Uchimata Sakeshi, Triple didn't commit. He kind of went half-hearted in for the Uchimata, and you can see there that Moreau beats him to the punch. The metaphorical punch, of course, but his and Kosei Inui's trip has been well worth it. 
We spoke with Morao after his victory. Not only did my coach, Kose Anui, travel here only for me, but he is a teacher at my university, and he is an athlete I really look up to. I've been aspiring to be like him since my childhood, so it is a great honour to be here with him and fight We caught up with Inui-sensei to find out a bit more about him in our latest Meet Your Coach. I started judo when I was five years old. My father was also a judoka, so I started judo because I looked up to him and he was doing judo. My signature technique is uchimata because it was taught to me by my father and that makes it incredibly special to me. My hero is Yasuhiro Yamashita Sensei. When I was a kid, I saw his judo all the time, and I wanted to be a judoka just like him. Well, of course, we fight with each other as athletes, as coaches, but in my heart, I believe we are a judo family. I respect all athletes and coaches. I admire every judoka like they are my friends and family. I love Japanese music so much because I usually listen to music in the car. I like music that I can sing along to. That's why I like the Japanese music the most. First of all, I was influenced by my father, and next, by my high school teacher. I felt that helping someone to develop and grow is an honourable occupation, so that's why I'm taking on this responsibility. Lately, I've enjoyed cooking. I have four kids, so I cook for them, but I only started cooking recently. Firstly, I want everyone to know the beauty of the sport of judo. As a judoka, I have learned the power of living through judo. Therefore, I want them to aim for the top when it comes to the world of competitive judo. Also, it is important to utilize what they learn from judo and bring that into their daily lives. They need to be conscious of this whilst continuing to practice judo and practice fighting. All the matches I fought when I was competing. Now, as a coach, each match one by one. As a coach and an athlete, I have made a lot of precious memories and got valuable experiences through all of the IJF events that I have attended in my career. The Olympic Games and the World Championships are the battlefield of top-class athletes, so I am very excited whenever I get to participate there. It could be said that judo is competition, but not only that, we have to improve ourselves through judo and contribute to society by repaying what we learned from judo. This is very important, and I believe this is the beauty of judo. Russia had another big chance for gold at under 70 kilograms, as rising star Madina Timazova took on dangerous German Skochimaro. Could Timazova give the home crowd something to celebrate? Well into golden score here, and they're both exhausted, you can see it. Timazova going for gold, of course, for Russia. Skochimaro tries to submerge. Oh, now then! Was that a score on the rebound? We can't see it from this angle, but uh, we'll have a look from a different angle here. Scotty Morrow goes in for the Sumageshi, and as she comes up here, Timazova attacks, and you can see the landing there is on the side. So she gets the Wazari, and it's enough to get the gold.
And that was real opportune judo. The Russians celebrate. And I've got to say how good it is to have the spectators up in the stands again. Russia had four world-class athletes entered at under 66 kilograms. But it was the lowest ranked of them, Murad Chopinov, who powered his way to the final. With the crowd behind him, Chopinov was on scintillating form and scored Ippon after Ippon. Opposing him would be Minku of Belarus, who knew that a medal here in Kazan would all but secure his Olympic qualification. Spurred on by this, he too launched an unstoppable barrage of attacking judo to give himself a shot at gold. Which one of these two would come out on top? Some really explosive judo from both these fighters all day. Big Ippon, somebody's gonna go! Oh, it's Minko who goes! Chopinov changed direction, and that was a brilliant change of direction. It really was. It was very low to the ground. Look at that. Great Tewaza there from Chopinov and gold for Russia. And there was a guaranteed gold for Russia at under 73 kilograms, as two friends, Makhmadbek Matmadbekov and Ayub Kazaliev, stepped into the arena to contest the final. Well, well into golden score here, Kazaliev. Two Shino's on the board and he knows he's got to do something. Arm over! Oh, it gets countered! Mavadnikov of Russia's best mate, actually. And you can see it there, can't you? They're best of mates, they're room buddies, and he's just thrown his mate. What a thing to do in front of his own crowd. And, uh, well, he had to uh, commit, Kazeliev. He came in, he wasn't fully committed, and Matbakov takes him backwards, flat onto his back. And that's what happens when you don't fully commit there. Matbakov, well, he had great Tewaza there, great control, and took him flat onto his back. Still mates, still best buddies, and uh, nice to see that. And even on the way out there, look at that. This is what makes our sport so special. Mr. Rostam Minikanov, President of the Republic of Tatarstan, to present both the medals. And that was a great result for Russia. Our number three Ippon came at over 100 kilograms, when Germany's Johannes Frey took on Vladut Simeonescu of Romania for plus 100 kilogram bronze. One and a half minutes to go, and Simonescu trying to control the sleeve of Frey. Now, Frey! Oh, what a Sianagi that was! Oh, how deep he got there, right the way underneath, and the Kubakata was perfect. The Suruti hand and the Kazushi hand worked together, and that was a brilliant Ippon. In at number two, was eventual under 57 kilogram silver medalist Daria Mezichkaya of Russia, with this simply sensational spinning Uchimata. But our top Ippon came when Lee of Korea went up against Russia's Lapinagov for under 81 kilogram bronze. Left against right, always difficult to get two hands on here. Lee's looking for the sleeve. So's Lepinigov, though. Now then. Oh, look at that. Reverse Sianagi and Kosoto. What a combination that was. He couldn't get the hand on straight away. Then Lee manages to get the second hand on. But look at the hips. They pop right the way through there. And the angle's just right to go round the outside of the leg there for the Kosoto. What a brilliant combination. We asked Neil to take us through this incredible technique in our dojo. What an amazing combination. And it's a technique that the Koreans do all the time, the reverse Sianagi. And as he came in, he over-rotated through and he changed direction completely in for the Kosoto. Let's just have a little look how he does it. 
Remember, this is left against right, both looking for the sleeve here, and Lee was holding very, very low, which happens often, and this hand came on to the same lapel as he was rotating through. Uh, so what happened was, um, he rotated through for the Sienegi, came too far through, and then attacked with the Kosoto to score the Ippon. Uh, let's have just one more look at it here. So look at the hand as it comes on. Look at the hips coming too far through here. Now the hand's on, and then the chain direction here to score an amazing Ippon. He changes direction in order to score the Ippon. What an Ippon it was. We start our roundup of the action at under 48 kilograms, where former world champion Tanaki Funa of Japan showed quick feet and predatory Neiwasa to top the podium. Mr. Marius Visa, president of the IJF, was on hand to award her the gold medal. Reigning world champion Chuk Vimiani of Georgia found his best form to defeat the experienced Mushfida Badzi of Russia. Mr. Sergei Solovitchik, vice president of the International Judo Federation, awarded him the under 60 kilogram gold. Helen Resovo of France took on Daria Mezichkaya of Russia in the under 57 kilogram final. The narrowest of Rosaris was enough to hand Resovo her first World Tour gold in almost five years. Her teammate Roman Dicko continued her incredible winning streak, winning her fifth World Tour event in a row. A quick Kouchi by Poland's Agata Ozdoba Black earned her a vital victory at under 63 kilograms and moved her up into the Olympic qualification places. Attila Ungvari of Hungary did exactly the same himself. A clever piece of footwork for a Kouchi of his own also moving him up into the under 81 kilogram Olympic places. Anna Maria Wagner further cemented her place as German number one at under 78 kilograms, scoring Wazari and securing an Ippon scoring hold down to take top spot in Kazan. And finally, Antalya Grand Slam champion Tamalan Bashaev found himself against Brazilian man mountain Rafael Silva in the plus 100 kilogram final. Bashaev taking the victory for Russia on penalties. But it was Silva who grabbed his teammate Felipe Kitadai and joined us for our brand new quiz feature, Think Fast. We start with easy. Focus <laughs> Agatami. Gigi Gatami and it's five seconds. Next up, easy, medium, or hard? Easy. Ashibara, Ochigai, or Sotogai. Ah! And good in judo. <laughs> I'm not good in the other. <laughs> easy again. A really easy. <laughs> Teddy Hiner, um, Matja Shiviri. <laughs> it's hard for him to accept that other guys from this category. <laughs> okay, medium. Medium. Let's try. It okay. El Nur, Mamadli. Oh, five seconds. I said the name and the last name, it is hard. <laughs> I guess a half point. Five seconds is a little time. Yeah. <laughs> Easy, I, I need to, to tie with him. Osai Pomi, Osotogari, and it was It's good. And food, go ahead. <laughs> Baku, Tashkent, Tokyo. It's not Tokyo anymore, it's Osaka. Okay. But you two us. <laughs> okay, medium for me. One, two, and three. 
Ditegal. Itu kalau di. It was very easy then. No. Hard. 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 Um, two, three, five, over. You only remember Nomura. Always Nomura, Nomura. Uh, and so, so <laughs> they grow at the same age of, of him. Change the name, I forgot his name. Tamura. Tamura. Uh, hard for me. Hard. Tokai, Kukushka, and Teiri. Yes! <laughs> He's so far in the lead, there's an option for do or die question. Do or die. means if you win it, if you get this question, it's the hardest question. If you get it, you win. If you don't get it, you lose all your points. Okay. That's it. <laughs> finish at under 52 kilograms, where Japan's Abe Uta was in action. The double world champion has a date with destiny at the coming Olympic Games, and is considered by many to be the outright favorite for the title. Here in Kazan, she underlined her position as one of the stars of the World Judo Tour, with a blistering display throughout the preliminaries. Former world medalist Andrea Kitsu of Romania could do nothing to stop the relentless attacking threat that is Abe. The same went for Anna Perez Box in the semi final. Abe was into yet another final. Waiting for her there was French judoka Astrid Neto, who knew that she would need to produce her best to live with Abe's incredible technical ability. Neto will be reluctant to let Abe get two hands on. She's got the sleeve now. Abe now pushes the hand down. Look at that. Oh, brilliant. Sony Surakamigoshi. And the action reaction on that sleeve then was fantastic. Was Harry scored? Hips came right the way across there, but it's the way in which she managed the uh, Kumakata that was brilliant. Neto needs a score. Was Harry down? Can't stay there. And uh, straight in for the uh, Newaza there, Abe. And she's going to change the direction to the other side. And she ties the arm up here, looking for the Sumagage. And she changes the direction there. Neto thought she'll defend to the Sumagage. And Abe just rolls her backwards onto her back. Just needs to hold for the 10 seconds. Wazari and Wazeti upon. And that was absolute brilliance from Abe. Never looked in trouble. It was a great change of direction here that uh, just took Neto onto her back. She thought the Sumagayashi was coming there. She's seen her do it before. Her reaction took her onto her back there. And Abe just showed that she's absolutely dominant in this weight category. And she'll be looking to the Olympic Games and only the Olympic title. This woman here is absolutely fantastic. So that's it from Kazan. Next, it's Budapest. Four years after it last hosted Judo Showpiece event, the world's best will be back there once again for the World Judo Championships. Join us for all the drama as Judo history will be made.